Hey everyone, it's Eric Thor here and today I want to talk about the INTJ personality type. And what I've found is that people have deeply misunderstood what the INTJ personality type and the myth, the legend of the INTJ is completely different to the true story, the real INTJ. So today we're talking about it, the myth, the legend versus the reality. Now what I've found is that INTJs tend to experience intense pressure to be intelligent, to be gifted. INTJs grow up with standards, with expectations from society, but also from themselves. True it is, INTJs, they expect a lot from themselves. They tend to be very intense, they tend to be very driven, very goal-oriented. They want to be successful and they want to amount to something and they want to be worth something but the reality is a lot of INTJs are going to go through a lot of struggles before that happens that means you are not a race car you're not going to rush speed your way to success you're not going to be a millionaire before you're 18 <laughs> at least all, most of you are not that means INTJs what I want you to do is check yourself, pace yourself, and keep track of your body and your heartbeat. Keep track of your energy, keep track of your current status, where you are right now, your current environment, where you grow up, the conditions you live in, the society that you are brought up in. Understand that you have a current environment, a current situation. You have current resources available to you, current limitations, boundaries. And you have to keep track of and understand these things. You have to understand the present situation versus the ideal or expectation that you are racing towards. Now, I made this video because I wanted to dispel one major serious misconception that people have about the INTJ personality type. Truth is, what I've found is that people believe INTJs to be like Elon Musk. Yeah, when people imagine the greatest INTJ in the world they're thinking of Elon Musk and that's interesting because turns out Elon Musk might not be an INTJ at all no Elon Musk he was very very deliberate in when he created his persona his celebrity image we think of Elon Musk as the gifted uh, engineer that created these amazing inventions. We think he created PayPal. We think he was the one that designed and made Tesla. We think he is the one that got us into space uh, way faster and way cheaper than NASA. Yeah, we think so many things about this guy. But what if he's not an engineer? What if he's just a very, very gifted marketeer? When you look at the real INTJ and compare it to the Elon Musk that we see today, one thing is clear. The INTJ is more likely to be found on the basement, not on the stage. While Elon Musk is out there charming different people to invest in his company, while he's out on Twitter, like building his own hype, creating this whole image like success, power, status, intelligence, uh, breaking the norms, going against the flow, doing what nobody thought was possible, the INTJ is sitting at home in their basement. Yeah, the INTJ life is spent far more inside than outside. That means when you look at and when you understand introverted intuition, you have to understand this. Introverted intuition prefers to be here than there. INTJs like INT, uh, INFJs like myself, we have a dream of going out into the public, of putting ourselves out there, of realizing our ideas, of doing something with this. Like we want this to become that. We want to take our idea, our vision, our goal and put it into the world. That's very, very important to us. But it's difficult. It's not easy. It's not easy to take this and turn it into that. It's hard to realize your ideas. And the path to success as an INTJ is not what you think it is. 
it's not going to be steaming through society fast like a race car. It's not going to be uh, putting your ideas out there and suddenly having a massive audience, backers, investors, people ready to buy your inv invention. It's not going to be people immediately thinking, wow, this person is incredible. Wow, this person is a genius. No, it's going to be people that look at you and go, why? But why? Why do we need this? What's the point? What's the purpose? I've heard that idea before. Oh, that's nothing special. Oh, that's impossible. That's not going to happen, you know. As an ITJ, you are racing against the flow. You're choosing the difficult path. You're choosing the path that's going to take time. That means don't expect too much out of your 20s. Don't expect too much out of your teenage years. Don't expect your ideas to become real tomorrow. Don't expect your vision to come to life within seconds. No, it's going to take time and you're going to need to pace yourself. Allow it to happen in your 30s or even your 40s or maybe possibly in your 50s. And recognize the amount of time that you're going to need to fulfill your ideas. Don't just see your idea, but also see the time it's going to take to make this happen. Recognize how long time it's going to take this beautiful, intricate system that you see in your mind to become something real, important and lasting in the world. So, don't think that you have to be like Elon Musk. Don't think you have to be successful tomorrow. And now, while you're comparing yourself to all the successful people in the world, you know, Elon Musk, you know, uh, Tesla, Bill Gates, you know, all the people out there that made it, all those great innovators, creatives, you know, all the people that put their ideas out to the world. <laughs> I want to tell you one thing, and that is break all conventions about how a person is to become successful. Break all the recipes, break all the instructions, ignore all the rules, ignore all the things people tell you to do in order to make it in society, you know. Find your own path. That means trust and find your own path, you know. Your idea is unique and that's why your path to becoming successful is also going to be unique, you know. If you want to be truly original, you have to uh, create your own path there as well. Because if you follow the set path, if you follow the recipe, if you follow the instructions, you're going to end only end up where other people have already been. You're only ever going to find yourself constantly straggling on behind other people. The more you try to mimic and copy other people and successful people in the world, the more you're going to find yourself constantly comparing yourself to them, looking at them from up above, uh, seeing yourself trying to keep up, seeing yourself trying to race ahead in the path and seeing that they're always one step further. They've already been there. They're way ahead of you. They've been there before you. They know everything you're going through. They've seen it all. And they're looking down at you and they're like, they don't even know who you are. <laughs> they don't even see you because every this road is full. You know, recognize this. The road to success, the recipe, the way to become successful, the way to make it is full. It's overcrowded. There's people everywhere. You know, an INTJ, you don't like crowds. You don't like being part of this whole mass. You don't like being a sheep. You don't like being a person uh, like stuck in the same room as a hundred million other people. So find your own path, find your own way to make it in society, find your own goals, you know, and you find your own ways to make your goals come to life. So when looking at other people, when looking at successful people, when looking at people who made it, understand you can learn as much as you like, you can draw us whatever lessons you want from how they made it, but recognize that ultimately what's going to set you apart are the unique things you do on the way to success. That means only learn the rules of society so that you can break them. Only understand the path that other people have chosen so that you can know what path to choose for yourself. So to know what path you can create for your ideas to make it in the world. What I want to show you today is how to become successful and how to realize your ideas. And the first thing I want you to understand is you are not God. <laughs> you are not a mastermind. You're not a genius. You're not able to uh, transform reality into whatever it is you want it to be. 
You're not able to go from this to that in seconds. You're not able to wave a wand and suddenly everything is there. Suddenly everything is done. You're not able to do this. You're not going to be immediately successful. You're not going to be immediately great. So what you're going to need is an intense amount of patience, an incredible amount of focus, and a humongous amount of self-discipline before you make that all happen. Beyond that, what I want you to understand is, and this is perhaps the most uncomfortable thing for you to understand as an ITDA, and that is that you have a past, you have struggles, you have trauma, you have issues, you have struggles that are holding you back. So INTJ, you're not a clean slate. You're not this uh, perfect ideal that you see inside your head. You are not the future that you envision yourself headed towards. You are constantly tied to your past and your resources and your family and your education system and your society. That means understand where you are coming from, not just where you are headed. What I see with INTJs, the major issue I see with INTJs is they stare blindly about the future that they want to head towards. But they don't understand that what creates the future is the past and the foundation that you are standing on. So probably what you want to do, first of all, the most important thing you want to do is you want to work on that foundation. That means before you can become successful, you want to create a life, a pedal to jump from, you know, because most billionaires today they started out as millionaires they started out with rich parents successful people behind them most people today that have made it in the world they had a foundation what what was it that helped them make it what was it that made them successful what was it that made them succeed well it was that base foundation loving parents supportive environments friends a healthy relationship people around them that held them up, that backed them together, that put them where they are today. What I want you to understand as an ITJ is you can't go from sitting alone in your basement to one day becoming a richer, successful or important or meaningful creative person that has managed to shape the world with your ideas and your intellect alone. No, you're going to need backers, you're going to need support, and you're going to need a society and environment that is conducive to you. And that means also find creative friends. Find people who will brainstorm with you. Find people that will uh, listen to you when you have cool new ideas. People that won't immediately shoot you down. People that won't immediately call you stupid. People that will support you and say, hey, that's cool, and what can I do to help? So. As an ITJ, what you want to find is support groups, uh, meetup groups, you know, environments where you can go and work together with other people on things you are passionate about. I mean, I know meeting people, oh, that's straining, but meeting people for the goal, for the sake of your ideas and your vision, that's actually fun. Yeah, that's actually going to be energizing. If you can meet up with real bright people with good ideas, if you can meet up with the other cool people, entrepreneurs, people around you that have passion, that have purpose, that have vision, just like you, you're going to have an environment that is going to be much more inspiring. Because through this, what I want you to understand is, most of all, you need inspiration. Have you ever found yourself sitting at home thinking you want to make something but having no idea where to begin? Have, I, have you ever found yourself sitting hours trying to do something, putting so much effort into wanting to do something, feeling that you have a glorious purpose but having no idea what to do? Well, the reason is because you don't have inspiration. And where do you find inspiration? Well, you find inspiration by taking risks, putting yourself out there trying out new things, doing something crazy that you can't explain yet. Yeah, surrender yourself to your intuition. That's what I want to tell you to do today. Surrender yourself to your intuition. That means allow yourself to go into new environments, travel, or if you don't want to do that, uh, go to a new meetup or a new group or a meetup with new people or find yourself in new situations or sign up for a challenge or a competition that you don't feel ready for yet. You know, 
uh, even if you don't feel ready for it, even if you think, wow, I'm going to be terrible and this is not going to work out, you know, do it anyway. So a lot of the time it's about uh, doing things that you're not quite ready for yet, but almost ready for, you know. So that means do things that are going to challenge you, do things that are going to get you out of your comfort zone, set goals for yourself that are slightly above your comfort zone, but not too high. <laughs> and I say not too high because that's the problem INTJs have. You set your goals and expectations too high. You say, okay, I'm going to make this idea happen and I'm going to do it in two weeks. I'm going to have to do it immediately. It's going to be super fast and it's going to be done. It's going to be incredible and it's going to be super successful immediately and it's going to be incredible and it's going to have so much resources and so much time into it and it's going to have such high quality and it's going to be so great. <laughs> but no, I would say always... Uh, First, after you set a goal, always think 25% less of that. Always think 25% less than that. Okay, actually, no, two weeks is probably unrealistic. I should probably say t uh, four weeks. Actually, uh, no, um, uh, like, I, I can't reach that high. I should probably set it to, instead of uh, 100,000, set it to 10,000, you know, like scale that back, you know, scale down the goals. Uh, because INTJs set their goals too far, too high, and too fast. And that means you're never going to feel satisfied. And dissatisfaction is the number one killer of INTJs. Yeah, dissatisfaction is probably the emotion that INTJs struggle with the most. INTJs, they're never happy, never satisfied. Nothing is good enough. It's always... Oh, I should have done it better. Oh, I should have done it faster. Oh, I should have made it more successful. Oh, I should have uh, uh, gotten more support for it. I should have gotten more views for that video. I should have done this or that. You know, INTJs, they're never satisfied. <laughs> the reason for that is because you don't know how to set realistic goals and expectations for yourself. You're always trying to trump yourself. You're always trying to... Uh, be better, higher, faster than what you are. You know, one thing that I see that really gets INTJs down is this idea that you have to have this magical personality, you know. You have to have this magical personality that you don't have, you know. You have to have the prettiest face, you have to have the most amazing charismatic voice, you have to have this m most addictive sense of humor, this incredible way with people, you know. You have to have this charisma and it's so difficult for an INTJ because you feel this pressure like I have to be incredibly charismatic I have to be so persuasive I have to be so likable in order to make it in today's society success that comes to people that have good personality and I don't have that however what I want you to understand INTJ is you do have that you do have an incredibly addictive charisma you do have a truly fascinating personality. You do have this unique sense of humor that a lot of people out there are going to love. And beyond that, I think why people are going to love it, you know, that's what I've noticed later on, is the reason why people love it is because you're successful uh, despite having that, you know, because there are people out there that go into the world and they make it purely on charisma. They have a lot of charisma but zero talent and they have this uh, polished charisma they smooth faces clean voices uh, clean outfits you know they have this way of just blending in just being one with everyone being everyone's friend but INTJs they have this way of brute forcing their way into this charisma popularity club. You know, uh, INTJs, they break all the rules and that's why they're popular. A lot of time what I'm seeing is, INTJ, you're going to become popular. You're going to become likable because you're not likable, because you're not popular in the stereotypical sense of the word. That means you're going to make it in today's society because the people that see you, they're going to be like, wow, this person is funny without being conventionally funny. This person is good looking or beautiful because they're not conventionally beautiful. And that means a lot of time, yeah, what are you going to see is you have this uh, way of like infiltrating the likability corner 
uh, without being likable. And you're going to find that incredibly funny and incredibly amusing once that happens to you. Once the day happens where people see you and where people see your ideas and see how much work you put into things and how creative you've been and how hard you work with things and how great you have become with something and how talented you are at it. Uh, they're also going to see how likable you are and how much personality you have and how unique you are. And they're going to be like, wow, this person <laughs> has found this unique recipe of life. And that's what you want, INTJ. You want to find the unique recipe in life. And that means the first thing you want to work on is not your sense of humor. It's not how likable you are. It's not your clothes. It's not your outfit. That's not where you want to start. No, start with your ideas. Always start with your ideas. Your ideas should be your core number one responsibility, your first sense of duty. The first thing you want to be really there, the first thing you really want to be perfect is your ideas. And that means take your time on that. Take your time on having a beautiful, captivating, fascinating, mechanically amazing idea. Execute something perfectly, you know, find the skills necessary to realize your ideas. And that's the second part. What I'm seeing with INTJs is INTJs need to have skill. You need to be talented. You need to become good at what you do. You need to go on the grind. And that means if you want to become successful within your ideas, if you want to realize whatever it is you want to realize, whether it's a new app, whether it's becoming an artist, whether it's becoming a comedian, you have to mas master the mechanics of this craft. You have to go on the grind. You have to go and work at it, improve at it, better yourself at it. You have to constantly challenge yourself to develop your skills. That means if you have a great idea, the first step, the first part is actually not necessarily to execute that idea, but it's to start writing down, okay, what skills do I need to have to execute this idea? What do I need to learn? What videos do I need to watch? What skills do I need to get before I can make it happen? So INTJ, often you're going to find you're starting in the wrong angle. You're jumping into executing an idea and then you're feeling dissatisfied because it's not good enough, because you couldn't execute it, because you didn't have the skills. No, what you want to do is, the first step you want to take is write down the skills you're going to need to have in order to execute it. And write down the resources you're going to need to put in to make it happen. Because a lot of time in order to make money, you have to spend money. And that's something that's incredibly difficult in today's society. You want to make it in the world, but you don't have the resources or materials necessary to do it. You know, if you want to become a successful video game streamer, you're going to have to have the best computer. <laughs> if you want to uh, become a video maker, you have to have the best camera and equipment. If you want to uh, become um, successful, you have to have to put money into what you do. You have to put ads out. You have to... Uh, like register domains, you have to create websites, you have to do all these things, you need all these resources to make it in today's society, you know, and that means you're going to need to find backers, you're going to need to find investors, you're going to need to find people that will support you, or you're going to need to find ways to get the resources necessary to fulfill your dreams. And you know, if you're not having the resources yet, if you don't have the uh, equipment, if you don't have what you need in order to make it, Go and get it. Go and find ways to get it. Be creative in thinking of how I can make that. Okay, I have this idea I want to do. I have these skills I need to acquire but to do it. And I have these resources that I need to use in order to get there. I don't have the skills. So I'm going to have to take these courses together. Or I have to do this, practice this and grind this or work hard at this. Oh, okay, I need these resources. I need this amount of money, or this amount of ads, or this amount of exposure. I need to get out to this amount of people. I need to get these amounts of numbers, clicks, or exposure to get there. You know, you have to write down all these goals. You have to um, get it all down on paper. You have to have it all clear in your head. And you have to look at, okay, if I don't have the money to do that, if I don't have the website, if I don't have the resources, if I don't have the people supporting me, if I don't have the manpower, you know, how can I get that? Okay, then... That's your next step. Get the skills and get the resources. Uh, so only after you have that can you really uh, begin to truly realize your idea. Like, of course, you can practice before then. You can try it out. You can uh, put it down and see what happens. You can play with the idea. You can do whatever you want with it, you know. But only after you have what you need in order to get there, you know, that's when you can really... Put yourself in there and make it happen.
And I know, some people, they're incredibly lucky. They put out one video and they're an instant success. They put out one song and they're a one-hit wonder, you know. A lot of people get lucky, but you can never count on luck. Luck, yeah, if you get there, it's amazing. And if you have it, it's fantastic. But you can never count on it to happen to you. You can never count on a lucky star to shine on you and to get you immediately where you want to immediately. You can never count on becoming a one hit wonder or an instant sensation or becoming instantly successful. You can never count on immediately getting an investor to back your idea. You can never count on whatever it is you need in order to succeed. You can never count on immediately getting an A on that essay or uh, getting that study done immediately or like you can never count on anything. You know, you have to constantly have backup plans that means you're gonna have to constantly understand that okay this might take longer than what i expect i might fail at this essay and i might need to do a do-over i need to factor that in you know understand that you know my video my first videos they might not make it you know they might not become instantly popular people might not see this or yeah this comedy routine that i'm gonna go out and do yeah people might not laugh at my first jokes and i'm gonna have to pre prepare for that you know so understand that luck can happen to you and it can be incredible, but even if it doesn't happen, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep trying. I'm gonna keep working hard at it and I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna work hard at it until I make it. The final question is, when is it time to let go? Okay, imagine you've had an idea you've been working at for such a long time, you know, you put so much effort into something, you've made so many attempts, you worked so hard at it, but you never made it. And the question is, should I give up? Is it too late? Has my time passed? Has uh, this ship sailed? Is it not going to work out anymore? Is it over? Letting go is probably one of the most difficult things for an INTJ or INFJ. We want to work until completion. We desire closure. We want to make it happen. You know, we, we are prepared to put an immense amount of effort until it does. But I'm going to ask you some questions. Do you feel like this idea is serving your happiness and your health? Does the pursuit of this idea make you happier? Has the pursuit of this idea stopped serving you? Maybe it was fun, maybe it was fascinating, maybe it was interesting, but perhaps it isn't anymore. Does this still feel fun or good or rewarding for you? Because when you were starting out, probably it felt fun, probably it felt rewarding, probably it felt meaningful, you know? And the most important question is, is this idea still valuable? Is this prospect still meaningful to me? Does it still matter? You know, does it hold value? Because of course you're going to have difficult days, you're going to have struggles, you're going to have times when you feel stressed or times when you feel overwhelmed or bored or yeah, when things are not good anymore, you know, but does it still feel worth it? If it doesn't feel worth it anymore, if it doesn't feel like it has value anymore, if this idea doesn't feel all that nice or all that rich or all that rewarding or stimulating anymore, that's when it's time to let go. Only then, only when the meaning is gone, only when the value of it is over, only when you feel like this is not serving you anymore, only then is it time to close the door. No INTJ, here's something I really want you to know. The world needs you. The world needs creative people with determination and focus. That means work your ass off, <laughs> put in your best effort, give it your all, take all the time you need to do what you feel is meaningful, valuable and important, you know. Really put it in your hours, put in your best effort, get the best possible skill. Uh, become the most talented person, the most worthy person to realize your idea. Become the best person that you can be. Become incredible. Become so talented, so good, that while people look at you, they look 
How does he do that? How is he so good? How is he so incredible? Be a magician. Be a person that operates at a higher level than most people in the task or skill or vision or the idea that you believe in. Be the person most worthy of your ideas. Be the person uh, prepared to risk it all. Be the person prepared to put in the most effort, the most resources, the most time to make it in your field or what it is you feel passionate about. And while you do that, be the person that takes the best of care of yourself while you do it. You know, Be the person that really cares for and loves for yourself while you do it. Because what you're doing is incredible. What you're doing is worthwhile. What you're doing is fantastic. You know, I see you. I see how hard you're working to improve at what you do. I see how great you are, uh, how inspiring it is to see you work hard at becoming good at something. I see how much hours you put in. I'm seeing how incredible you are. And honestly, if you saw yourself right now, I think you would be inspired too. If other people saw you and what you were doing, they'd be inspired. And if you saw yourself doing what you do, you'd be inspired too. So be somebody inspiring for yourself, you know. I'm not saying it's not going to be hard. I'm not saying it's not going to be difficult. I'm not saying it's going to be tough days. I'm not saying it's sometimes not going to feel heavy or stressful or difficult or overwhelming. But I'm saying be a person that you can love yourself for being, you know, be a person that keeps on going even if it's tough and be a person that goes and looks at yourself and goes like, wow, I really did put in my best effort and I really worked hard at that and I really was trying really hard at something and I really was putting in my hours and I really was doing my homework, you know, be somebody that loves yourself and appreciates yourself for what you do, you know, whether it is making your bed in the morning, you know, whether it is, you know, taking time to uh, really... Uh, perfect something or to hit 100% you know look at yourself for all the effort you're putting in and appreciate yourself for it now INTJs if you have any comments if you have any thoughts on this subject feel free to leave it down below thank you all for watching this video and I hope to see you all in the next one